Good morning, and welcome to our church here in Newcomnock. It's good to share fellowship with you on the Lord's Day. Welcome to those two who will join us later online or on the phone. As you can see, I'm not Mr. York. Many of you will know that Ken was admitted to hospital last week. I am pleased to say that he is feeling much better. I went to visit him, went to visited him yesterday and he's looking and sounding much better. I also know that within himself, he's feeling better as I received this message from him before I went to visit him. I am conducting a very useful study on how different people respond to illness when they're in hospital. I am also interested to find the large number of nurses and medical teams who have a deep interest in belief in God and bring me the questions they have about faith. So there you go, Mr. York is resting in hospital. If all goes well, he will get home tomorrow, but we will remember him and Greta in our prayers later today. Our intimations, the CAT session meeting on Tuesday evening has now been cancelled. Can I encourage you to please read all the other intimations in the order of service. If there are any urgent pastoral issues this week in the parish, please do contact myself. Let us worship God. We may not all be gathered in the same building, but at this time, when we need each other so much, we are invited to worship together from where we are, knowing that God can hear us and can blend even distant voices into one song of worship. So let us stand together and sing our first hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging the doubts that linger within us and the moments when our faith wavers. In the stillness of this sacred space, we confess our shortcomings and seek your forgiveness. Like the disciples in the locked room, we sometimes find ourselves paralysed by fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of inadequacy, and fear of the challenges that lie ahead. In those moments, we have doubted your presence and questioned your plans for us. Lord, forgive us for the times we have struggled to fully trust in your resurrection power. Forgive us for the moments when we have allowed doubt to overshadow the truth of your victory over death. We confess that there are times when we demand tangible evidence, seeking assurance in what we can see and touch, rather than trusting in the unseen reality of your love and grace. We ask for the faith to believe without always needing to see. Grant us the strength to follow the example of those who trust in your word without demanding visible proof. Lord Jesus, reveal to us the areas in our lives where healing and transformation are needed. Make us aware of the needs around us and guide us in acts of compassion, mercy and reconciliation. May the same spirit that breathed peace into the locked room breathe forgiveness and renewal into our hearts today. Strengthen us to go forth with courage, sharing the good news of your resurrection. Lord, our hearts overflow with gratitude and thanksgiving for the precious gift of unity and fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for the bond that unites us as a community of believers. We acknowledge the anointing of your spirit, covering us with grace, love, and the assurance of your presence. We are grateful for your grace surrounding us, bringing renewal, strength, and a sense of connectedness that flows through our individual lives. Thank you, Father, for the peace and harmony created when we, your children, live for each other, no matter our differences. As we reflect on the goodness of unity, we offer our thanksgiving for the moments of laughter, hope, happiness, togetherness, of comfort, strength, and the ability to share the weight of our burdens, which is found in genuine fellowship. Your presence among us here today, Lord, brings meaning to our gatherings and peace and joy to our hearts. May our gratitude be expressed not only in words, but also in our actions towards each other. Empower us to love sincerely, to forgive readily, and to bear each other's burdens willingly. We offer this prayer of confession, gratitude, and thanksgiving in the name of the risen Christ, who continues to transform doubt into faith and darkness into everlasting light. And we pray together in the words he gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I knew I would forget something this morning. That's it. I see one wee one over here and one wee one here. Amelia, nice to see you this morning. Nice to see you too. Darcy, nice to see you, Darcy. 
Good morning, everybody, and a special welcome to our young folk this morning. I wonder if I can say something to you, girls. Do you like my nice blue jacket, Amelia? Do you like that nice blue jacket? Hmm? So, no? Is there something wrong with it? It's what? It's pink. Do you like my nice red shoes? No, they're not red. What about my nice purple blouse? It's white. You're so good at this. Of course it's not, my jacket's not blue. How do you know that? Because you can see it. You can, you can see it. And you, you know it's not blue and my shoes are not red because you can see it. And when we see things, we believe, we know that they're true. When we can look at something and know, we see it, we know it's what color it is, and we can, we can believe it. We also see things and we remember things. I've got some things for you this morning. I'm not going to show you them, but I'm going to describe it to you. See if you can guess what it is. Okay? This thing, listen, this thing is very long and very thin. And you might use it on a piece of paper. What do you think it is? What do you use on paper? It could be, but if I tell you you can sharpen it, what is it? Well done. It's a pencil. If I tell you that this thing has got lots of colours, and it's got lots of pictures in it, and it's got words in it, what might it be? You might need somebody to read it to you, or you might be able to read it yourself. What do you think it is? It's a... What do you read? It's a book. This one's called One Woolly Wombat, and that's not something that you see in Scotland. Do you want to take that to Sunday school and maybe Margaret will read it to you afterwards? So, how did you know from my description that that was a pencil and that was a book? Because you've seen them before and you know what they look like and you remember what they look like. You know, when I was a wee girl your age, I maybe got 50 pence for my pocket money. And if my mum and dad had ever said, we're going to give you five pounds for your pocket money, I think I would have said, well, I'll wait and see. I'll believe it when I see it. You can believe it when you see it. And that's what we think as well. When we see it, we believe it. And do you know what? That's what happened to some of the disciples. Remember that Jesus was, was crucified on the cross and he was put in the tomb and the stone was rolled in front. But when the women went the next morning, the stone was rolled away, Jesus wasn't there. And they ran away to tell people. And they said, I'll, I don't believe it. I'll need to go and see. And the disciples went to see for themselves and they said I believe it because now I see it but also Jesus appeared to his disciples in a room he came and he stood among them and they well they were shocked amazed overjoyed but there was one of the disciples not there he was called Thomas and when they told him Jesus is alive. Jesus came and stood among us. He said, no, nah, no, nah, I don't believe it. But he was very lucky. He was able to see Jesus because later on, when all the disciples were together, Jesus came and stood among them. And Thomas said, I believe. We can't see Jesus, but we can believe because we know that he came back to see his disciples and they saw him. 
we should be very grateful that we can use our eyes to see things and believe in them. But we also need to see with our hearts and our faith. And when we do that, we know that Jesus is alive. We're going to sing your song now. It's called, Jesus' Love is Very Wonderful. Do you know that one? It says, Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. And you can do the actions. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. You can even clap your hands when you're singing. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Let's see if we can sing it. We're going to sing it through twice. reading this morning is Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down, to, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life for evermore. Second one is John 20, 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, when the doors locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Thank you, God, for your word to us today. We we'll stand and sing once again, make me a channel of your peace. Our prayer for others, let us pray. Gracious God, we lift our hearts in prayer. We pray especially this morning for our minister and friend, Ken, and his wife, Greta. Lord, lay your healing hand upon Ken that he may be restored to good health. And may Greta and all the family know your love surrounding them. We pray that Ken and Greta will be back among us in the very near future. We pray for those who, like the disciples, may be wrestling with doubt or fear. May the light of your truth dispel the shadows, bringing reassurance and peace. Strengthen their faith and grant them the courage to walk boldly in your light. We pray for those who feel isolated or lonely, yearning for connection. Wrap them in the warmth of your love and guide us to be instruments of companionship and support. 
May we actively seek out those in need and extend the hand of friendship. Lord, we bring before you the broken relationships within our communities. Heal wounds, reconcile hearts, and inspire forgiveness. We pray for those facing adversity, illness, or distress. Surround them with your comforting presence and grant them strength to endure. Use us, your church, as channels of your love, bringing practical help and compassion to those in need. We pray for all caught up in conflict across our world. We especially remember those families sorely affected by the recent events in Gaza. May those who have committed these acts truly repent, and may your hand be on all who have suffered great loss. We pray sincerely that those in power would use it for the good of others. And now, Lord, we bring before you the names and situations that lie heaviest on our hearts. Lord, as we pray for all these needs, we place our trust and hope in your endless love and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This Sunday is known as Low Sunday, after all the rejoicing and excitement of the risen Lord on Easter Day. We come just a little bit quieter. And today we remember Doubting Thomas. Here is a poem by Marka Acton. I went to church, but I couldn't really believe in God. The trouble was, my mind was close to the possibility. I could not accept that there was something more to our existence, something in particular in our lives that we couldn't see or touch. Most of all, I wanted to make my own choices and not think they were wrong. I killed God within me all by myself. Thomas, the apostle, did not believe others. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas couldn't accept the truth. He said, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hand and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. God showed up and gave him the chance. I always wanted proof like Thomas received, but didn't really want to put my hands and to terrible wounds. That sounded a bit disgusting. I had no understanding that my wounds were his wounds. As I lived with deceit and rejection and dishonesty, I was placing my hands into his nail marks. When we least expect it, God will show up. Weeping comes for the night, but at dawn there will be rejoicing. We sing together once again how often we like Thomas.
I don't believe it. A well-known character, Victor Meldrew. A character I'm sure you're all familiar with. And I'm sure you've all said at some point, I don't believe it. With a situation, a comment, which you really can't believe happened or is about to happen. The belief in the unbelievable. Maybe it's something like Kilmarnock winning 7 nothing against Rangers. Or maybe it is a real life event or tragedy. I don't believe it. Which is a reaction of shock. Another phrase sometimes used is seeing is believing. Today's passage in John's Gospel, I am sure you're familiar with, often referred to as doubting Thomas. But why is that a bad thing? We have to remember that Tom and Thomas didn't lose his faith. He just found it really hard to accept that Jesus did appear to the other disciples. So Jesus came and stood among the disciples after he had died in a room that was locked. How would you feel if you were one of the disciples that day? Scared stuff? Thinking it was a dream? But Jesus said, peace be with you. A comforting phrase. Then he showed the disciples his hands and sighed and they were overjoyed. The disciples who were gathered there they knew it was the Lord. They had seen for themselves the nail-pierced Lord. But Thomas wasn't there. And when he was told about it, you can imagine. No way. This is not true. I just don't believe you. How can you tell me this happened? Thomas doubted. How many other disciples did too? before the Lord, the Lord showed his wounds. We don't hear any more that, that the other disciples made fun of him or that they questioned his unbelief. What we do hear next is that a week later, when they were all together, again in a locked room, including Thomas, Jesus comes and stands among them and again says, Peace be with you and says to Thomas to touch his pierced hands and side. Can you imagine what that must have been like for Thomas? Wow. He has so overcome with emotion that all he can say is, my Lord and my God. Totally amazing. Thomas just needed some reassuring seeing as believing. As Christians, we believe and have not seen, but have felt the calling and touch of our Lord in our lives. The part that is difficult at times is to go out and share the gospel message to those who don't see or don't believe. Today in the church, we know there is great change and there are many doubts as to what is right and what will work and what, what won't work as we can't see the future. We all need to pray more that we will be guided by our Lord in the way he wants us to go. Yes, it is difficult at times, but again, if we think of the reading from Psalm 133 today, it started with these words. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Like the disciples maybe. We here in New Cumnock are trying to work together for the good of our Lord and Saviour in a pleasant atmosphere with others at a difficult time for everyone in the churches around us. Sometimes it is good to be reminded of that 
as a bit of encouragement goes a long way. So next time you hear somebody say, I don't believe it, maybe they just need some encouragement in that situation. Amen. Your offering will now be uplifted. Let us pray. Lord, may we always give our gifts to you as a thank offering for the magnificent gift of Jesus that you so generously gave to us. Accept these our gifts and use them for your church in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is At the Name of Jesus.
now may the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hand of God protect us. May the love of God go with us this day and forevermore. Thank you.